Shoka. Yeah. Shoka. You want to see Abel? Yeah, Abel's mama. They don't, she doesn't, Shoka doesn't like, she doesn't register dogs on Zoom. I've introduced yeah. her to dogs on Zoom. Okay, so in order to um, make me big, which is probably what you'll want, um, go, uh, you're probably in gallery view right now, so you want to go on speaker, speaker view. view. Click on speaker yeah. view. Yeah. Then click on my little video at the top, and uh, there should be a little dot, 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 and a little ellipsis. And uh, click on that, and then click on pin video. Hmm. That'll keep me. Dot, 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 and an ellipsis. Well, the, the dot, dot, dot is an ellipsis. So look for the little ellipsis, which is the dot, dot, dot. Where am I going to find that? Well, you have to you have to mouse over my image, the little square, and then the little ellipsis will show up. You'll see mute, probably, maybe. And it doesn't show up when I'm in speaker when you're in speaker view. It doesn't even show up. You have to mouse over the image. It's not working even if you mouse over the image. You have to like move your cursor over the image and then it'll then it'll show up. Otherwise it when you stays. say over the image, you mean like over your face? Mm -hmm. That's not showing up. Hmm. It shows up for me, but it doesn't show up for you. Hmm. How would you pin? Uh, try going on my image and right clicking. No, it's not working. Just click on, just uh, tap on my image and see if you get a drop down. Oh, pin video. Uh huh. Yeah. Right. So click on that and then yep. you'll, that'll, that'll do it. All right. Let's get rocking. Now, I would like for you to kind of bring me up to speed with anything you have read in the book, done so far? Well, when I first got the book about a month ago, okay. I read some stuff that I have no idea, no remembrance. <laughs> no. So I just did work with the tuner. I had to actually order a new tuner okay. or a new battery for my tuner because my yeah. battery died on my other one. And I just was tuning it. So I okay. don't even, you're gonna have to listen to it to see if it's right. I All don't right. think it's close. Okay, let's hear it. Do one string at a time, starting oh, okay. at the, the highest one. Okay, starting at the top. Yep. That sounds good. Now, when hold on, when you pluck that, does your tuner, you figured out, like, does your tuner turn green? Does it go, like, does the... Does it have like a thingy that has to? Yeah, oh, but let me, let me do it. Let me do it okay. again because I wasn't looking at it. Fine. Okay. Let me look at it. Well, that's a problem because it says A. <laughs> it says A. No, it's all right. So that it goes to the top and it goes to the middle, but it says A. That tells you that it is um, tuned too high. Okay, so what you wanna do is turn your tuning peg. Uh, so pluck the string, yeah. then as it's ringing out, as you hear the pitch, then, to, then turn the, the tuning peg and you will hear the pitch go up or down. You want, to go, you want to go down. Clockwise or Clockwise or counterclockwise? Uh, I, I, it's hard for me because uh, uh, you're doing it left-handed. It would probably be clockwise with your left hand. So just just turn it one way or the other. It doesn't matter. You're not going to break anything. So just um, pluck it. Make sure you pluck it and you listen to the pitch and you listen for the pitch going up or down. Yeah, don't be bashful. Pluck it again. This is. I see, I see it got a D star. Okay, that's good. All right. So that means 
Yeah. That means you have, um, you've tuned it down successfully. So now you're at D, which is a little bit lower. So if you just think in terms of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, those are the only seven letters you have to concern yourself with. Okay. Seven letters. It's very conveniently simple. And um, so if you're at D, you're too low. You want to get to E because your first string is E. The way you can remember your strings is starting from that top string, which is the lowest pitch. Eagles are dangerous. God bless eagles. Yeah. Right? Or Eddie ate dynamite. Goodbye, Eddie. I just learned mm -hmm. that one last year <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from my elementary school boy. Mm -hmm. I was like, yes, leave it to you. Um, so uh, you want it to get to E. So now you're going to do the exact same thing, except you're going to tune up this time. So you're going to pluck, let the pitch ring out, and then tune it upwards and watch the um, meter go up on your tuner. Oh, it's not, uh, that's way to the, it's went all the way over to the other side. Okay, that's fine. Then you just fine tune it from there. So if you're on E, but it's too high, you're just gonna slightly go downward. At this point, you're not making large turns, you're making small turns, yeah. and you're kind of monitoring it. It's, it seems like it's super sensitive. Some, some tuners are very, very, very sensitive. Well, they all have to be sensitive. Um, some of them are spastic, and I don't like them. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you just, you have to get used to it. Once you do it a bunch of times, yeah. you get used to how it, how it picks up, you know, the sound. And... But what I'd like to do too, is teach you how to tune it, like tune the E, and then I'll teach you how to tune it, the guitar without the tuner from that point on. Oh. Get now, to get it to get it you know per perfectly accurate you want to use the electronic tuner the digital tuner but you can you'll eventually know how to tune your tuner if you're out in the desert <laughs> you don't have a piano you don't have a a440 tuning fork and you don't have an electronic tuner or your battery died right so you want to be able to tune it that way too so you want to get it like basically in the neighborhood at this point. Don't worry about it being totally perfect. All right, you pick at that for just a minute. I'm going to go make sure Serena gets out of the bathroom. Well, it shows the letter E, but it's like that, these two red bars at 10 o'clock. I see. So that's a great way to describe it. That's perfect. So um, then you just keep doing little micro movements. That's and that until you get there. Some people at the beginning, people are usually very timid to turn it. Um, and you don't need to be timid. You just, you, but once you get this close, yeah, you have to make small adjustments, but don't be scared to turn it. To me, your sounds like the pitch. Now it sounds too low. Yeah. Once we get this, I want to work with you on your Zoom sound setting. B sharp, gum it. That's okay. This means you're too low, so you need to twist the other way. 
You're still going down rather than up. Okay, now we're going back in the right direction. And once you get within one bar or two bars of it, just let it go. You know, it's good enough. That sounds very close to me. It's still the, it's still the two red bars. Yeah, that is, that's a little what's flat, so it's a little below the pitch. So just turn it again a little bit more in the direction of bringing the pitch up. Don't worry about passing it. It's okay. You're super close. Just keep going up. Now it says, now it's giving me a blue bar straight up the center, center that says A. <laughs> <laughs> Let me hear it. One more time. That really sounds close enough to me. Okay. I wouldn't worry about it. All right. Now, oh, oh, here's a question. Do you have a tuner that looks something like this? Something similar to that. Okay. Oh, I hate those. Okay. Those, <laughs> those are really notoriously finicky. All right. But here's what we need to make sure. You need to make sure you're on guitar setting because those are, those will do multiple uh. different instruments. And if you're on say violin or ukulele or something like that, it'll continuously be trying well, to. Well, how do I find that out? Well, the button, the on button usually is also the toggle button. Watch mine real quick. Let me see if I can show you on mine. Can you see on there where it says guitar? I hold it. Barely. Maybe okay. at the very so bottom. Now watch where it's just moving. Uh, hold on. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now I'll I'm moving that. it and see how it's moving to bass and then whatever that says, ukulele, I think, or something, violin. So, and I'm just pushing the on off button that's on the back. It's also the toggle button that toggles you between the different instruments that it will tune. So you want to find it, it might just have a G or it might say guitar. I got a BPM with a, with a number 100 below it and a flashing heart. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's beats per minute. That's your um, And heart. then I got um, what should that be set on? Does that matter? No, that doesn't have anything to do with The only thing that happens when I press these little there's little two, there's three buttons on the back of this. You can't oh. see them, but there's three buttons on the back of it. There's two triangular shaped buttons and one round button. What's the brand name? Super tight snark. Snark tuner instructions. Here we go. All righty. And when I press these little triangle buttons, I get little musical notes. One, two, three, and four. Okay. Four of them. Down arrow and flat up arrow, pitch calibration. All right, once you've attached the snark to your instrument, turn on by pressing the power switch on the face of the tuner. Um, all right, the round button back there. Um, hertz, it's coming up hertz. 440 hertz. Okay, yeah, that's good. That's fine. That's A440. Um, okay. Um, uh, as the snark is chromatic, you can easily deal with non-standard tuning. Okay. All right. So 
it's just reading it doesn't have like uh different settings for different instruments correct it's just it's chromatic which is, is just like it'll just tune whatever you're you're playing whatever note it is you're playing um all right all instruments including guitar since the vibration of the instruments okay all right so let's do a snark we'll read it as the standard e making tuning up here to be standard capo okay oh how interesting all right okay so it is um oh wait a minute okay try something here um oh no that's just the hertz never mind that okay uh, you want to be at a440 which is that's that's what you want so that's where you are um so that's good so it's just i think you're just going to just need to kind of get used to it let's do the next string as a little test thing so listen the next one's going to be eagles r the a string <laughs> you can do the exact same thing and tell me where it says you are Now you're super close there. You might be slightly sharp, which means a little bit too high, or it might read it as being correct. It's just about correct. Okay, and fine. It's the, it's the, I mean, it's the right on the money, which is the blue straight up and down. Yep. And it had one little bar to the right of it. That's fine. Go on to the next one. Eagles are great. Dangerous. Right? Dangerous. Yeah, they are great, but. <laughs> that sounds right on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is right on. Good. Your ear is like perfect. Okay. Yeah, that was good. That was right Eagles on. are a dangerous god. Wait. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That sounds right on to me, too. Yes. Okay. That was right in. Bless. That sounds good too. Yeah, it's good. showing me. It's showing me no variations whatsoever. Okay. These, these last ones. That sounds good. Okay. Okay, so let's do something before we move on. I had such okay. a hard time with the E. Oh, yeah. well, whatever. You'll you'll get used to it. The more you do it the more it'll get familiar. All right, so scroll, like take your mouse and go down to right next to where your little, on the Zoom display, bottom left, you should have the little microphone. Yeah. It goes like varying levels of green. To the right of that is the little carrot top. Click on the okay. carrot top. You have to mouse over the microphone to see the carrot top doesn't automatically. You're talking about the mute button? Yeah, look for the mute button. Oh, Mouse oh. Over, There's a carrot top and click on the carrot top and then you'll get a pop-up menu. My computer doesn't show any carrot tops. It just you have, shows. You have to mouse on the mute button. Put your mouse over the mute button and then it'll pop up. I am. I have a pop-up menu, but it's no Hmm. Carrot tops. <laughs> uh, well, how did you find that? Remember the the uh, when we pinned the video? Yeah, I just uh, right clicked. So okay, try right. right click. Are you on a PC? Yeah. Okay, that's the difference. All right, so right click on it. See if you get the pop up menu for this. It should say select a microphone at the top. No, I, uh, um, yeah, I was on the right thing. Select a microphone. Okay, good. And then click audio settings. We're going to make some adjustments. Under select a microphone, I have stereo mix. And in, and in parentheses, it says real, real tech R audio. And then below that is microphone array. Go all the way down to the bottom and you should, it should see open audio settings or something like that. Audio settings. Oh, uh, okay. See that? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. All right. Okay. So now it says settings at the top of that pop-up. 
Um, and we want um, go make sure that your speaker output volume is about three quarters of the way up. Output level. Output volume. Yeah, output level, and then right below that is output volume, and then just use that slider to go about three quarters of the way. Okay. 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 Got it. And then on your microphone, uh -huh. uh, it's input level and then input volume. Make sure your microphone is slid all the way up. Okay. Okay. And then uncheck if it's checked. Uncheck automatically adjust microphone volume. Okay. I think maybe I had to do that in order to slide it all the way up. Okay. Oops. Now I can hear you, girl. All right. All right. Then uh, let's see. Okay, then go to advanced in the bottom right. Okay. Okay, top says show in meeting option to enable original sound. Check that. Check it, make sure it's checked. Yep. Okay, then um, suppress persistent background noise. Yeah. Select disable, excuse me. Okay. Same thing for suppress intermittent background noise. Select. Okay. All right, once that's selected, um, you can click out of that box. So no, do nothing with echo cancellation? Correct. Okay, so click out of the whole entire settings box? Yep. Okay. You can let that go. Now, um, it, back in your Zoom screen, on your top, the top left of your Zoom screen, it should say, turn on original sound. It says fine. turn off original sound. Oh, okay, fine. That means your original sound is on. If it says turn off, that means it's on and that's what you want. Okay. You want original sound on. So now that, those, I think what we've done is, uh, I think once you do it, it's done unless you change it. But you do have to, every time we have a, a lesson, you have to turn on original sound each time. The option will be there. We had to go turn that on because without okay. that, you don't even have the option. But what that does is helps, um, like when you pluck a guitar string and the, and the tone is ringing out, Zoom tries to cancel that sound. So we have to tell Zoom, don't um, try to cancel and suppress that sound um, because gotcha. that's, that's, so we just optimized it for music lessons is what we did. Okay. All right, very good. All right, now. Yeah. Now, I, I want to do want to say it's 930 and I don't know how much time you were planning, but I don't okay. know. If, I can't remember if I said 30 minutes or what I said. You said 30 minutes, but we can go another 15. Let's do okay. some stuff. Okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, let's get to something to... fun. Da, da, da. Let's go to, okay. Well, here's what I'm going to do. We'll come back to learning to tune like in a different way from using a tuner. We'll come back to that. That'll yeah. we can put that off. Um, and you've got a good playing position. I'm not worried about that. I'm, I'm on page four of the book right now. Okay. I'm kind of flipping through. And, uh, and then um, now looking at page five is all of that new to you or is that like did you used to play piano or have music I don't no I've never well I took piano lessons um briefly but never really learned anything I mean it was yeah. I don't have I don't have any consider me starting from ground zero okay fine for everything yeah. for everything check okay so now um, let's take a quick, like five minutes to blow through this page. And then I want you to go back and read it again okay. and let it really sink in. This sets you up for the whole, this sets you up for like the rest of your musical life. Like this one page, like no kidding. It's all kind of boiled down on this page. So don't worry if you feel like you just got hit by a tornado. It, it is a little bit, but it is not. Let me just say this as clearly as I know. This is not more complicated than it looks. Okay, it like when you look at it first, 
yeah, it's a bunch of, you know, it's kind of a lot of stuff on one page. Once we go through it, you might think to yourself, well, that doesn't seem as complicated as I, as I thought it was going to be. And that is the correct inclination. It is really not that complicated, but what happens is you, it, when you're a kid, it's just kind of like all thrown at you and you're not, you don't really have a categories for it unless your brain's already wired that way. And uh, unless you're like super interested in it, if you're like most kids, you're just kind of doing the lessons because you want to learn to play piano or because your parents are forcing you. So you're not really like, oh, I'm so eager to learn this, you know, oh, I can't wait. So mm -hmm. this is, you are now in a different place right? You're eager to learn this. And when I tell you that this really does unlock this little key, this page unlocks so much of guitar and piano. Let's make sure we're talking about the same page. Nope. That's the, so, uh, that's good. Okay. So you have that version of the book. I'm, that's fine. That for me is page, um, Three, I think. So turn to page five or turn to page uh, seven, maybe in your book. Musical symbols. Yes. Okay. 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 So I now we're now we're talking about tuning because we, we kind of, yeah. <laughs> so how much of musical symbols do you know? For a cross board, we are okay. starting at ground zero. All right. So that's what we're going to blow through this. And then I want you to go back and let it simmer. Okay. Like read it through again yeah. and realize yeah. like the, at first it's going to feel like, ah, cause we're going to yeah. blow through it. But then when you go back and let it simmer, yeah. it, it is, it is not complicated. It's very yeah. logical. It's actually quite simple, but it might seem at first overwhelming cause you're learning it all at once. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, um, all right. So on, let's just start quite, frankly, with the staff. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, you got five lines, mm -hmm. all right? All music notes are written on a staff or um, like, yeah, there's a, something called staffless notation, but whatever, we're not doing it. They go straight for the staff in this book. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the, the lower lines are lower notes. Mm -hmm. Itch. They're going to be your Eagles are the, you know, mm -hmm. that's low pitch, the mm -hmm. higher lines, our higher pitch. Okay. okay. Now those lines and where they are on the page do not course. They're, they're not, they don't represent the guitar strings. That's what I was okay. thinking at first. But then as you were talking, I was like, no, that is not right. That's correct. Yeah. Like when visually they're, they're inversely proportionate to the right. strings. Right, 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 right. These yeah. go up, these go down. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So you are, you're on to that. Okay. So, uh, but they do, they go up in pitch. So music, uh, notes and stuff, uh, the, um, the, the staff notation is what it's called. Music notation looks like it's going to sound. It goes low yeah. to high by going yeah. down to up and high uh -huh. to low by going up to down. Uh -huh. right? Uh huh. That's as simple as that is. I mean, so that's. And I should know that just from singing in church, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You got it, girl. Now we have our first clef sign, which in this book is all you have to ever have to know. You've probably heard of treble clef and bass yes. clef at some yeah. point in the past. Okay. They don't even do. I wish they did bass clef, but they don't do bass clef in this book. So we only do treble clef. Um, now. The what does that mean? Thing. It means the treble sound is like pronounced or we're working on a treble scale or something? Was yes, it? yes, and yes, and yes. Treble just means higher. Yeah, like, as opposed bass. to bass. Yeah, as Low. lower. So a treble choir is usually like a boy's choir or children's choir because they've got higher voices or female. And then like okay. you know, mixed voices, SA, TV, soprano, alto, tenor, bass, they would have treble and bass. All right. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so we're working with the treble clef. Now, let me give you another key that's going to unlock so many things for you, okay? The treble clef sign, yeah. just looking at it, yeah. if you kind of let yourself get artistic about it for a second, it is a G, right? The middle of it is a G, all right? Yeah. Let me, yeah. yeah. 
that with a little lip that goes like that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's got a little cap on top of it and a little hook at the bottom, but it's yeah. a V in the middle. That little hook surrounds the G line. So it's, that's like a clue to you of where you are. You always have a clue of where you are because the treble clef sign, um, the little hook surrounds the G sign. And let me, um, and it's the second line from the bottom, right? Second line from the bottom and it's surrounded by that little hook. Are you talking about the hook, the little black hook on the bottom? Let me that, see. Let me show you. The nope, little, nope. I, mean, the I call, little I call that the tail. tail. I call that the tail. Hold on. Um, images. Travel club. Sign. All right. Let me um, show you this way. All right. Let's do this. No, let me let me get one that um, has the lines. It has the staff. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. All righty then. Treble clef. All right. So I call this the tail. Uh huh. Okay. I call this the cap. Okay. And here's your G. Yeah. Right. I call this the hook. Okay. But, you know, when I'm drawing this with kids, I go. Uh, this is the like the worm on the fish hook. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is the fisherman's hat. This is his uh, backside. This is his bum and this is his belly. Okay. So the belly wraps around the G line. Oh, 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 I see what you're saying now. Okay. And, the, the, and here you can see this down here and we're going to get to this in just a second. This down here, uh, you can see the G right here. Yeah. You just follow that right through the belly. Boom. Uh huh. So you always can reference that treble clef sign to get an idea of where you are, um, what note you're on, or whatever. You can kind of figure it out from there. Like you're going to learn to identify all notes by sight, but yeah. that at the beginning, that's a great reference point. Uh huh. All right. Okay. Now we can keep this up here because uh, it's handy. Because I need to work on memorizing my, um, what was it, Eddie, Eddie? Well, the strings are, um, eagles are dangerous, God bless eagles. But of course, we're going to have different ways to learn the treble clef lines and spaces. All right. So look down here at the line notes. All right. And it's the same picture you've got in your book. We got the lines E, G, B, D, F right here. Uh -huh. e, G, G, B, D, yep. F. Mm -hmm. So we're, we don't use the Eagles are dangerous. We've got every good boy does fine. Do you remember that from elementary school? No. Uh, I got another one for you. We got every good boy deserves fudge. We've mm -hmm. got um, empty garbage before dad flips. Uh, every good burger deserves fries. You name it, I've got one for it. Okay, so you <laughs> pick the one that works for you. You just, you know, just learn something. Now the space notes are much easier. It just, you know, it rhymes with space, but starts with an F. <laughs> Face. Uh -huh. so that's easier to remember. All right. So, um, so you just have to remember, at first, you have to just discipline yourself to remember that these this is not this has not this is not the eagles are dangerous right 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 yeah and the strings aren't the every good boys are i just need right. to not think about that right now right that eagles are dangerous i just yeah. need but you're gonna have to get that in a minute because we're gonna take what this is is teaching you let's say you you wrote a song all right and you were like oh i've got this song and i gotta write it down so somebody else will be able to take the song that was in my head and be able to play it as i construct it in my head mm -hmm. so this system of music notation was developed over time and so that a composer can take what is in his or her head write it down yeah. so other people can play the same thing yeah and then you take that, whatever this is, these notes, 
and then you play them in the appropriate place on your guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, so just like you know, on a piano, right? So mm -hmm. it uh, and that will become more clear as we move along. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's look uh, next. Uh, let me see if we've got a bar line that I can show you. Okay. Mm, no, I don't want staff paper. I want staff with bar lines. Okay, this is what we want here. Well, kind of. I'm trying to find exactly what we want. So far, we don't have exactly what we want. That's okay. We will get to that. All right. Oh, come on. I don't want that. <laughs> Let's just do this. We'll use this. All right, so here we go. We've got the treble clef staff. We've got it. it's on the staff lines. So then we have these vertical lines. These are bar lines, right? And mm -hmm. all the bar lines do. You don't play bar lines. They are just there to show you the measures. The measures are the spaces between the bar lines, right? So this mm -hmm. whole space is a measure. This is a measure, this is a measure, this is a measure. Mm -hmm. We have four measures, one, two, three, four, in this, on this line. Is that typical in music that you would have four measures per line? Oh yeah, you'll see that a lot, but it doesn't really matter. It just, uh, like, you'll have as many measures as the publisher wants to fit onto a line. But four is very, very common. And they're all equidistant? Uh, they can be, but they don't have to be. Okay. Yeah, they can be smaller or larger, but beginner books tend to have them all equidistant. But yeah. they are definitely not, uh, that's not like mandated. It's yeah. just, it's kind of simplifies things for beginner eyes. And what's the point of a measure? So a measure, all right. So within a measure at, at the beginning, and we're, we're gonna get to, okay, let's, let's bring up our next thing, okay. Uh, with, Time and bar lines. All right, here we go. Okay, this is going to give you an idea. All righty, so here we go. This is a pretty good picture here. So we got our triple clef, we got the staff, we got the bar lines, we have measures in between the bar lines. All right. All right. This is, it also, is it also called a bar? Because are measures sometimes called bars? Yes, if you like, I'm a few bars and I'll play along, right? I mean, that, <laughs> so yes, it's, but yeah. that's like a, a short way of saying, it's a kind of an insider way of saying measures. Okay. Right? I'm a few measures, but typically it's, you know, if you're going to be formal and correct, it would be measures okay. and the bar lines demark the, the measures. But okay. yeah, informally, I might say, give me a couple bars. Yeah. All right, so um, this number right here, which is now we are about three quarters of the way down the page on page seven, mm -hmm. and we're at the time signature. So uh, there will be different numbers in our book. The top number on this one is four, okay? The top number is the one you're really the most concerned about in this book for like the first half of it. Even, even yours, this book's one, two, and three all the way through. Uh, the top one is really the biggie. And that tells you how many beats are in the measure. Okay. All right. So mm -hmm. very simply, it's four. The top one is four. And so we count one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right. So far, nothing is brain surgery, right? There's no rocket science here. It's pretty simple yeah. once somebody sits and explains it to you and you want to hear it. Um, all right, so um, let me see. Notes on the staff, we got that already. I'm just looking for anything else that's useful here. This is the bass clef, we don't need that. Uh, okay, let me see here. Okay, and here we go. This is also very useful. We are not going to use um, these for a very long time. <laughs> okay. In this book, we, we get to this about like, a long way into book one. Um, but these we use regularly, but we start with 
the quarter note. Okay, I read this one right here. Mm -hmm. And the important thing about the quarter note in this time signature, let's go back up to the time signature real quick. Um, where'd it go? Okay. So we learned that the top number tells you how many beats are in a measure. The mm -hmm. bottom number tells you what kind of note gets the one beat. So a four must be the quarter. Four represents the quarter note. That's correct. Yeah. You might have an eight in there, which would mean that the eighth note gets the one beat. You would count every time you see an eighth note, you would count that as one or two or three or four. Um, and, and if there was an eighth note that gets the one beat, you would have eight of those in a measure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. So, but don't worry about that yet. Okay. But the bottom number can change. It just doesn't really change in this book for a very long time. So okay. the, you really, you, we and really thank God for that. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple. It's uh, four, the, which means the quarter note gets the count of one. All right. So now let's go back down here. Let me show you one other thing. Uh, okay. This right here, double bar line, mm -hmm. that signifies the end of the piece of music, whatever it is. It could be one line of music, could be 20, 100 lines of music. <laughs> it's just like yeah. the double bar line is where it says stop. This is the end of the song. Yeah. Right. All right. Uh, we haven't gotten there yet, but you will see this pretty soon. Um, these dots okay. in connection to uh, a double bar line signify repeat. It just uh -huh. makes you go back and do it again. Uh -huh. right? And if there's one facing, if there are two that are facing each other, that means yeah. you're going to keep going like this in a circle. Boop, 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 okay. Keep going back, repeating until you're tired of it. All right. Um, Okay, because so, like a short song, like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, but that like, I don't know. I was just, I don't know. I was just wondering what would be an example of doing that. Oh, uh, we will get there on page eight. Okay. We'll look at page eight in just a minute. All right. So um, if you look at the bottom of page seven, we're worried about for a long time, just the quarter note, which we have here which mm -hmm. is one beat, one, mm -hmm. two, three, four. Mm -hmm. The half note, and if you'll notice, I'm going to point, I'll point something out in just a second. Okay. The half note gets two beats, okay? Mm -hmm. One, two, and you hold it for, like I would play this, one, two, three, four. four. All right? I held each yeah, one for two. Again. Do that again. One, two, three, four. All right, and let, let me do the quarter note measure for you yeah. so you can hear that. One, two, three, four, All right? Each one gets one count okay. for that solid quarter note. The half note, each time I pluck it, I'm gonna hold the sound out for two beats instead of just one. Okay. The whole note, you hold it for four beats. One, two, three, four, before you stop the sound. Okay. That's all. There's no, I mean, it, it is not more complicated than that. And that will sink in it. Like right now, it's a little bit of fire hydrant, <laughs> but it'll. So this like, is, that's always true, Nat, that the, the whole note is held for four. No. No, no, no. It's only <laughs> when you have the four in the, in the staff. Uh, when, exactly. when, when the top when number, the number is, is four. a four. Yep. Okay. If the top number changes to three, which it could, and it could be three over four, and you have a whole note, you would hold it for three because that's how many beats are in the measure according to that time signature. Okay. And so the whole note really means the whole measure. Okay. Whole signifies whole measure. Okay. For the most part, it's going to mean four beats. Okay. And certainly in this book. For yeah. a very long time. Yeah, it's which is a good thing long. because it helps. It gives me time to think in between. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So now, so I want you to go back through that page and really kind of let it reread it and let okay. it start. But okay. for the moment, uh, let's, um, I got to yell up to the girls real quick and make sure they're in bed because it's almost 10 and 
I'll be in trouble if they're not. <laughs> if David gets home, it'll be like, why aren't the girls this way? Okay, hold on. I'll be right back. We can continue. Just give me a minute. Okay, the pitch of the note and how long to play the sound. Two or more eighth notes. I don't even know about that.
guitar player? You want a guitar player, boy? Pecans. What are you eating? Pecans. Oh. Melted chocolate bar. <laughs> Yum. Mm. I like it. Mm. Okay. Okay. All right. Continuing our lesson. We are now on page eight. All right. Okay, it is 10 o'clock, Matt. Yeah, let's look at page eight. Okay. And um, just, this is like where you're gonna actually learn to have something to practice this week. <laughs> as far as like a chord or two? Um, this is where the no, chords come in? It's gonna be notes. Oh, notes. At first. Okay. Um, but it's the basis for understanding how to read the chord charts, okay? Okay. All right. So this, yeah, is what a chord chart looks like, which I'm I've sure I've seen you those before. Mm -hmm. And um, let me um, stop sharing this. All right. So we're gonna learn really fast how a chord chart. Let me do something here. I'm going to get a screenshot. It's going to be backwards, but that's all right. Mm. How do I do that? Okay, it's gonna be a little fuzzy, but um, we're gonna learn how. Me... I probably need to get a music stand, don't I? It might make it your life easier. You can get one for like fifteen dollars. They're not okay, or like twenty. Uh, they're not gonna break your bank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. This is gonna be very blue looking, but you'll still be able. To... So, yeah, and it's going to be backwards. <laughs> All right. All right. Can we see notes on the first string? So now you refer to it in your book, but I'll point to it. Yeah. Um, but because that way you'll be able to see it forward, not backwards. But we're going to associate how you read what is on the chord chart from what is on the music staff, right? How these two relate to each other. Mm -hmm. So we're starting with our low note, the bottom E, e the first Eagles, boom, down there. Uh -huh. And 
this is, no, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. The high E, so it's the one that's furthest away from your face. Yeah. The lowest that's string, yep. And we're referring to that as string number one. In this book. Yeah. Most books start with string number one. Um, so this is where that note is that you're gonna be playing. This is where it is on the music staff. So you have your um, treble clef sign, the little hook yep. around the G line. And um, um, if we recall, it's every good boy does. And just on top of a D is always an E, E. But if we um, use the spaces to remember what this top space face. is, this would be mm -hmm. face, right? F, A, C, E, because mm -hmm. they, they both go up. Mm -hmm. All right. The string that we are playing, and remember, you're looking at this, look at it in your book, mm -hmm. not on here. It's, it's the one all the way on the right, not on the left. because mm -hmm. the And um, that is the string to play this note. Yeah. All right. And yeah. you play it open. So that's what this open means. It means don't fret it. Don't put your finger down on the string. You just pluck it and ta-da, you're playing the high E. Go ahead and do that. So I yeah. hit it with my thumb, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> right. Now, let's move on. We're going up. Yeah. Um, we played our E on that top space. The top line is F. All right. The way you play an F is you take finger number one, and we number our fingers, we, we ignore the thumb. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, All right? So finger number one goes on that first string on the first fret. So let's talk real quick about the guitar chord, All right? The chord chart. Clearly, it, it's a picture of the neck, right? Yeah. This th uh, thick line up here is the nut. Your nut on your guitar, and I recommend you go back to page, uh, where are the parts of the guitar? Huh, doesn't tell you the parts of the guitar. I feel like it's in there somewhere. Mm. Oh, there it is. Okay. Page uh, maybe four. It looks like this. You don't have to turn okay. it, but it looks like mm -hmm. that. And the top, that top guitar, uh, it points to different parts of the guitar, the basic parts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that thick line represents the nut, which is this. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. So, and then all the other thinner lines are the frets. Yeah. The vertical ones anyway. Yeah. And um, so you're going to take finger one and put it on the first string right behind the first fret in between the first fret and the nut. And you okay. want it to be right behind the, the fret, not closer to the nut, but clo the, the further toward the sound hole without being on top of the fret. You don't want to be on top of the fret, you want to be right behind it. That's going to give you the best, clearest ring out of the, the tone. We're talking Point. about closest closest to the sound hole. The, uh, closest this is the all the way down hole. here. All the way down here. Well, well, behind the fret that you're doing. So here we are. We're on string one. And I want to be okay, that's what I thought. In fret one. Yeah, I want to be right behind the fret, not back here, closer to the nut. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you see me? Can you see me? I can't. I can see you, but I can't see your hand. It's still too high. Now? Yeah. Yeah. Let me back up some. It's not really big enough, is it? Can you see me? 
Yes. That, is that right? Yeah, that's good. And then you just want to nudge right up there behind the fret. You actually oh, have to be really close. Touch, touching the fret without right there. Yep, and then pluck it. That's beautiful. If you stick your hand on top of the fret, got chocolate it, on your lip. Mmm. <laughs> oh, good. So if stick your hand straight on top of the fret real quick. I mean, your finger straight on top of the fret. Yeah. And then pluck it. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Feel the difference? All right. Yeah, no sound. I mean, the sound is very muted or something. Yeah. And if you go, that's because part of your finger flap is like getting in the yeah. way of the ringing of, the, you know, the vibration of the string. If you put it all the way back here, right by the, the nut instead of a yeah. close up, then you just have. It might sound okay, and or it might sound like just not any good. Yeah, it doesn't sound good. So the the optimal place is right up behind the fret. Okay. In in and, or in the middle of the fret, but right behind the fret is the best. That reduces the extra vibration or of the string. I see. The, yeah, the 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 unwanted thing. All right. You'll get the clearest tone when you're right behind the fret. All right, so now let's look at the next one. And that's our F. Okay, and look at the music notation right yeah. below the chord chart. This is the F we're playing. It's the high, the highest line on the music staff. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to the G. I want you to look at the chord chart and you figure out, show me, playing that G. Remember the numbering of your fingers. Woohoo! That was right. Yep. That was the correct finger, the correct fret. Good positioning. Oh, good. So, all right, let's do a little Clapping and counting, all right? Look at number one. So the exercises are numbered here. See those? Yeah. All right. So look at exercise number one. What kind of notes are those that have a big hollow thing? The whole notes. Whole note, how many beats do they get? Four. four. I mean, yeah, four, four beats. Yep, and a four, four time signature, they get four beats. All right, so. What is the first note we're going to be playing? I think that's an E, right? That is correct. There's a couple of ways you can know. Um, one is F-A-C-E. Right. The other is figuring it out from the G string because of the belly of the treble clef. The other is every good boy does fine and just kind of figuring out that top one. Hold on, I got to let Nathan in just a second. So let's do number one, clapping and counting. It'll seem excessively simple at first, you know, because it is. It should seem because it is. All right, but we're going to clap and count it. And here's how, and this is a practice that I'm going to have you do forever, right? So, <laughs> so this is a great way to learn music, learn reading music. Um, here's how I would clap exercise number one. I count myself in. One, two, ready, play. 
One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and off. That's exercise one, clapping and counting it. Okay. All right. So as you're looking, and of course, they'll get more complex as we go, but start with these simple ones. Yeah. Clap and count them. Then what you'll do is we'll play, you, you, you would play it. And this is a great just strategy. Okay. Clap and count. First, you look at it. Yeah. What do you see? Yeah. Uh, you know, look at the markings on there. What's, what's, what's it telling you? Is there any symbols there you got to pay attention to or whatever? Mm -hmm. Any notes or chords or whatever. Then you clap and count through it. Mm -hmm. You would then play each note, not worrying about the count, mm -hmm. just saying the note letter mm -hmm. name out loud mm -hmm. as you pluck it. Because then you're getting the kinesthetic mm -hmm. experience of doing mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Hearing the pitch and you're saying it, so you're getting the auditory reinforcement. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and you're having the visual because you're looking at it. Mm -hmm. right? So you got all these reinforcing things going on. So do it slowly, let it sink in. There's no, mm -hmm. no rush. So let's do exercise one that way, where we're not worrying about beats and time. You're just you're just associating. You're just plucking the letter name and saying it out loud. Okay. So you go ahead, you lead us on that, and I will go with you. So wait a minute. For one, the first note is F. No. And if, when you need to, look back at the top of the page. Um, e. Yeah. And then... So now, yeah. before you keep going, let's just pluck that. Here's our E. Okay. All right? And you say E. Okay. <laughs> and you pluck it, and you okay. look at it on the page. Okay. You're doing all these different things. E, make sure you're doing E. Oh. Oh. Yeah. E. What? You're playing F because you're fretting. Oh, shoot. That's right. E. E. There we go. So look at it. Say it. And pluck it. E. Okay. E. Good. Now let's go to the next one, which is going to be what? Next one is F. Yep. F. Say it out loud as you pluck F. it. Listen to it. F. F. Good. Keep that F finger there. Keep finger one down. Don't move it. Go on to the next note keeping finger one down and that's g mm -hmm. make sure you're oh. on third fret not second oh. yep nope finger three. Stretch. finger three fret three and generally at the beginning it's finger one fret run finger two fret two finger three fret three eventually we'll get to finger four fret four like that yeah yeah G. Say that out loud. G. And look at it on the page while you say it and hear it. Play it. G. G. Good. Now what's the next one? Okay, let me um, let me say something about your thumb real quick. Now your thumb is not too high, but I don't want to see your thumb wrapping around. Where you really okay. want your thumb is kind of the middle of the back of the neck. And it can creep up to the top, uh, okay. to the top of your thumb. Is at the top of the like, like this? Yeah. I don't want to see your thumb up here. Okay. Or up here like this. Okay. You'll see guitar players do it all the time. Okay. It's not good practice because okay. it crams your hand all yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. You want to have yeah. freedom of your wrist. Yeah. Right. So wait a minute. Um, G is my. I really need to have this first finger here and this third finger here yep. for G. Yep. I feel like when we were doing that before, I wasn't doing that. You might not have been because a lot of people don't, they'll just do each note independently. But if you yeah. 
look on here. So this is F and G together? Yes. No. Because you're, you're really, you're only playing G. You're not playing F. <laughs> but it's a best practice to have your finger um, in that F position. So that's a little confusing to me. Okay. okay. But there's, it's only vibrating from the G position. Okay. All right. It's only vibrating this distance. That it you're cancels have. out that whatever's behind that most forward fret cancels everything behind it out correct but you want to keep that finger down because as you move on and progress you'll be doing you know you'll be moving up and down notes right. and, stuff. and right. this is a best practice to okay keep that finger down and the same will okay. be true as we move down the strings and we play different notes okay right? okay Okay. So um, now let's do the last uh, the the last two measures. Okay, F G. Okay, now back to F again, right? Okay. Back to F. Yep. Yeah. But F. Say it out loud. F. 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 And then. And E. Yeah. Good. Yeah. We're basically wow. going up and back. Then that's right. That's all we did. Yeah. Now we're going to count it okay. and play it. So we okay. want to do it at a speed that you can maintain. Speed in music is called tempo. So you want to count yourself in at a tempo that you think you can maintain. At the beginning, that's going to be very slow. Yeah. So you might want to count yourself in like this. One, two, ready, Play one, two, two three, four, three, one, two, okay. three, four. <laughs> watch me, watch me do it once all the way through. Okay. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then damp. Okay, dampening is means just put your hand on it, stop it from vibrating. That stops the sound. So it felt really slow, but you want it to be a tempo that you can maintain consistently throughout the whole thing. Yeah. As you go along, there will be sections that are easier for you than other sections. Yeah. But you don't want to be like speeding up for those easy sections and slowing down for the hard sections. You want to work through it at the tempo initially of the hardest section so okay. that you can maintain an even tempo. Mm -hmm. And because that's, you want to establish that kind of metronome yeah. clock ticking in your head. You want to yeah. do that from the very beginning. And you'll be able to speed up very quickly. Like once you yeah. get down, yeah. you know, uh, it'll, you'll be like, oh, I can totally speed that up and do uh -huh. it again. Okay. You do exercise one again and you go a little faster, exercise one again, go a little faster, do exercise two, go back to exercise one, you'll be doing it even faster. So that's, that's how to work. Okay. Let's look real quick at exercise two. Okay. And um, by the way, I'm gonna I'm recording this for you, so I'll be able to send you a link for this. All right, okay. um, you can look back on it and refer to it. Um, so let's clap and count exercise two together. Okay. okay. So hands are up. Okay. <laughs> we count ourselves in at a decent tempo. One, two, ready, clap. One, two. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. That last one's a whole note. Got to make sure you hold it for all four. <laughs> <laughs> To take your eyes off the music you want to keep your eyes tracking yeah the measure right ahead of where you're where you're clapping or playing it so about halfway through to realize i was 
on the one when we were one and clapping that that was the actual is it a half note no mm -hmm. yep it is a half note. yeah like it made it yeah it took me a minute to be like okay that every time that circle is that's when i clapping that mm -hmm. circle shows up that's clapping. Right. Yeah. those um the whole note is just the you know the note without a stem yeah 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 add mm -hmm. the stem it becomes a half note i yeah. call that the empty belly all right you have the big round one that takes up the whole measure you add the stem divides it. every time you add something to notes it takes away from the length that you play it okay that was a little pattern i finally picked up on after playing music for like 20 years <laughs> <laughs> wasted on the youth and I am a prime example um, so all right I do have to kind of sign off for tonight we've been on for almost an hour and a half so like so fun so what I want you to do is follow those steps that I taught you okay look at the piece yeah what do you see start yeah. with that like don't skip that yeah clap and count it Review yeah. all you need to review back, you know, the page before. To yeah. remember, oh, this is a quarter note, this is a half note, this is a whole note. This gets one beat, this gets two beats, this gets four beats. Okay. And, um, and by the way, this tells you this in here, but we'll just look at it. Mid page, right below all the pictures of how you play it, says this sign, the little thing. Yeah, that I saw that a minute ago. Tells you to strike the string with a downward push. You can either use your thumb. Um, or your pick and or I use my fingernail either thumb or uh, usually I'm using my index finger fingernail and I hold it I brace it as if I was holding a pick but I don't use a pick I use the fingernail but I don't know how long your fingernails are if they'll do not that. long enough to do that right now okay. <laughs> um, so in your case you can just use the pad of your thumb that's, that's what I've been doing. Way. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. Yeah. And do you have picks? I have one pick. Okay. So if you'll just turn back uh, to page six, bottom of the page, it shows you how to hold a pick. And okay. so it's kind of like the point goes perpendicular to your thumb. But you but everybody holds it a little bit differently. You'll find over time a comfortable way. But that's how you can start out, gives you a place to start. Is it easier, do you think, for me to use a pick to start with, or should I just use my fingers to start with? Totally preference. But here's what I want you to do. Um, I want you to do it both ways. Okay. Every exercise you do, do with fingers and then with picks. Okay. So, all right, so again, you observe, <clears throat> observe the exercise. What do you see? What kind of notes are there? La da da. Um, Second thing is clap and count it. Third thing is pluck and say the letter name. You're listening to it and you're looking at it on the page. Mm -hmm. And the fourth is to play it using the counting. Yeah. That's called playing it with in, in rhythm or playing it in time. Okay. So, and then after doing it several times without, uh, oh, <clears throat> after doing it counting the rhythm several times, you just you kind of have that metronome kind of thing going on in your head. You can you don't have to say the counting out loud every time, but you want to do it a couple of times, especially yeah. at the beginning. Like the yeah. better you get at it, the less you have to do it. But I still count out loud. Mm -hmm. Especially while learning something new, I count out loud because mm -hmm. um, nothing's ever as easy as the, be <laughs> as the beginning. So you know it gets more complex. It's a great skill to have. Um, and really a necessary one. So I want you to see how far you can get Okay. on um, pages, really pages six and seven. Um, it's all based on the same notes, the whole note, half note, quarter note. Um, it's all E, F, and G. And okay. there's nothing new in that way. Um, if you look at exercise seven, yeah, 
The only thing there is to know about this one is, see this whole go on to the next line? Oh, uh huh. Yeah. So if you'll notice, if you follow measure one, measure two, measure three, measure four, there's no double bar line at the end of measure four. So what that tells you is that line is not the end of the music. Uh -huh. And you keep going and keep playing until you get to the double bar line. Because mm -hmm. you're not at the end until you're at the end. Mm -hmm. All right? Makes yeah. sense? Yeah. And if you see, um, the first measure on the second line is not measure one of the second line. It's measure five of this eight measure piece. Do you see the little tiny five right next yeah. to it? Mm -hmm. So that's telling you that's measure five. Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of um, some music numbers it right at the top of the treble clef. So this music is numbering at the bottom of the treble clef. Yeah. Sometimes it has a square around it. Sometimes it doesn't. Okay. So um, it just depends on the publisher, quite honestly. Right. And my book has these little pictures of little speakers. Um, so I'm imagining that if I go online, I can I can see this being played or hear it being played or something. All right. All right. And on your book. Mine does not have it because this is old um, or it's just the version that I bought. But on your first page inside, mine doesn't have it. And if you open up your book to the first page, the title page, you can do it now if you want. Open up, just open up the cover. It should be on the very first page. You should have a box kind of, kind of in the middle-ish of the page on the title page. The very first page, like open up the front cover. Oh, the code with the code. Yes, with the code. Yeah. So yeah. you have to establish your Hal Leonard My Library account, which is free. You okay. Put the book. And then okay. And just, you know, create a passcode for it. And then you just follow along. Yep, follow along. It'll have a, you know, like enter the book of your code, your book's code. And then, boom, it shows you all the songs. It lists the songs. Mm -hmm. Let me show you mine real quick. OK. Can you see this? Get rid of this. Get rid of OK. That was a good sheet. You got a few open tabs. I know. David's always like, you have too many tabs open. Okay. HalLeonard.com. Uh, my library. And then I would go to s sign in. Mm -hmm. Or you could go to enter access code. But I would, I would, I would establish yourself a little library thing. Mm -hmm. You might be adding to it. You, create your library. All right, so I'm going to sign in. Hopefully I'm saved. Yes, my info is saved. Um, There's my book. Yep, this is the one you have, right? Complete. Uh -huh. Yep. Book one. Mm -hmm. And then you would go, here's tuning. This would play all your pitches for you. Mm. All right. And you're just listening and you're trying to tune yours. You can pause it. Then it's going to play your A. Mm -hmm. Or no, I'm sorry, this must have started with. Yeah, that started with the high E. So actually start on string one rather than string six. Mm -hmm. So that's your tuning. Um, okay, exercise number seven, which we just did. We clapped and counted all those whole notes. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, that is, it, I guess it doesn't give you um, exercises one there because they're too simple. <laughs> it doesn't give you one, two, three, four, five, and six. It starts oh. with that one that we were looking at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The one that had the two um, staff. Yeah, two. Eight, eight measures. Let me just show you a couple things. You can speed it up and slow it down. So mm -hmm. if you're like, that's too fast for me. 
right? And if you're like, that's still too fast. <laughs> that's probably what I'll be doing. Right? And you feel like you could take a nap in between. Don't worry <laughs> about the pitch that you don't want to change that. Okay. Balance, don't worry about that. Don't worry about loop. Um, and you, uh, you know, go through the song like this. Okay. Forward and back like that. So it's really great. I, I yeah. really like this player. It's yeah. especially for the speed um, element, especially. And so let me tell you this too, a little, little practice thing for you, tip for you. So uh, when you're practicing a piece and you're trying to like master it, even the simple ones at the beginning, after you go through it a couple times and you go through our steps, look at it, uh, clap count, say the letter names out loud, and then play it with the rhythm, which just means the counting the measures, okay? So do that several times. And after you've, you've gotten to the point where you're like, um, you're not counting the measures out loud anymore. So then, uh, you, you can go to speed and speed it up to get better at it. Right? And, uh, and to, to try to like speed yourself forward. And here, my strategy is the following. So I'll start it, uh, if, especially if I'm below 100% learning a piece. Let's say I started at 80 and that's as fast as I can play it for a while. Then I'll go up 10% and be a little like, little panicked about it because it feels hard at 90%. But I do it at 90% several times, then I go back 5% and that's gonna feel easy. So then I get to where 85% feels easy. Then I'm gonna go to 95. And I'm going to feel a little panicked because that feels hard. Do that several times. I'm going to go backwards to 90. That's going to feel easy. So I keep working my way forward like that. Mm -hmm. And that helps you kind of increase your speed when you need to kind of challenge yourself. Because <clears throat> you can't get it to 100. That's how you get okay. it to 100. Or even faster if you want to. All right? That's a little tip. That's one way you can use this player. Yeah. All right. Yay. Thank you. So, and for tonight, just pay me for the half hour. It's been super fun. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Love that it. gives me a lot to work with for the yes. next however long. I wanted to get you through where you could actually do some stuff. With Have you. some homework. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, girl. All right. So, well, well, yeah. to, to pay me, you yeah. can. Do you have Zelle Quick Pay? By any chance? Uh, what? Uh, Zelle on Wells Fargo? Yeah, you might have it on Wells Fargo. I mean, what I'll do, how about this? I'll send you a request <laughs> for payment. And then, like, if your bank has it, then that's going to be easy. Like, that means our banks already talk to each other. And you mm -hmm. would have to make yourself a Zelle account. And Zelle, but Zelle, so Zelle's like the intermediary like PayPal, uh -huh. but it's free for me. So I like it better than PayPal. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I'll send what? you the, uh, the request for payment. Okay. Okay. And, in the meantime, and what's your, and what's your rate for half hour? 30 or 35. Okay. okay. 35 for an online lesson. Okay. So, but for you, it's 35 for two and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> or an hour and a half. <laughs> well, we'll, well, I think I, I, I kind of thought the first lesson would might end up being a little bit longer because you would have to help me tuning and help me kind of, the, yeah. Yes. Explaining a lot of stuff. Yes. And then you'd also have to quiet down a dog and put children to bed. Yes, that's very true. That's very true. So, but normally people would pay me for that. <laughs> <laughs> not that not the putting the children to bed part. Yeah. That's part. Yeah. Yeah. Normally I'm teaching during the daytime. Um do, do we so, make another plan for a future lesson or do you want to wait and do that? Um well we are we might be able to fit one more in this week 
if you want to, um, I, I would. Uh, Maybe a 30 minute one where you can see how I've kind of checked my progress. Yeah, we can. Um, we might be leaving on Sunday night or Monday. So that would be, and we'd be gone for like two or three weeks. So yeah, if you, if you, um, the thing is, is like you would, we would want, want to make it for like Thursday or Friday. So you actually have some time to practice between now and then. Yeah, or Saturday Friday. even. So yeah. Friday would be good. Friday is good. Yep. Let me take a look. That might work. Um, I was pushing for us to go canoeing Friday night. To okay. Bats come out of this cage. Okay. Um, okay. If we did Saturday, I have to do it like it, probably only in the morning is when I would be available, or okay. maybe or maybe sometimes Saturday evening later. Okay. I think What's your day? What does your day look like on Saturday? Saturday morning would be good, uh, like nine-ish. How's that be? If we if we did That's it for thirty minutes, if we did it for thirty minutes, I could do that. Yeah, I can't. I yeah, I can't always do an hour and a half for. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I mean, I think yeah, I think. What's your yeah. what's your time? When do you have to be out of the house? Are you busy? Well, I need to go pick up my niece and nephew, and I need. I would like to get to them as really kind of as soon as I can in the morning. I probably would leave at nine, but I can well, push it back. We could probably do. I mean, I'll probably be awake at eight. It depends on if we do go canoeing Friday night. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I get, if you need to leave, I, I get up and make sure I'm up by eight thirty. So we'll do that. Joe, guitar, and I'll just make sure I make myself plenty of reminders. Let's get your yeah. coffee. Get your coffee started. At, <laughs> you don't drink coffee, though, do you? Um, I don't drink caffeinated coffee. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> um, and I am going to send you a link to create for you to create yourself an account um, on what's called music teachers helper and you can use that to track like we'll both get reminders of your lesson times that we plan we don't have to plan regular ones but whenever we plan them i'll put them on that calendar that's how i manage all my students okay and they're paying and bill, billing and all that kind of yeah. stuff and um so i'll send you the link you would establish your account i would be notified that you did that I okay. activate you as a student and then boom. Okay. When you send me a request for payment um, to my bank or to me, will you do it on, can we do it both of these lessons on Saturday? Like, we, can you send me a request for payment for, for the Saturday lesson oh. and today's lesson yeah. on Saturday? Oh okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Is fine. That okay? I'll send you the request because I'm thinking about it. <laughs> okay. If I don't, it might not happen. Um, but that doesn't mean it'll automatically withdraw from my bank. No. When you you have to accept it and process it before. Oh, it okay. All right. Well, you can go ahead and send it today's. Send away, girl. I'm send it. Um, so, um, yeah. And uh, I'm putting this one day before, 10 minutes before. Okay. Thanks, Nat. I'm excited. 25 reminders for everything. I'm kind of excited about learning how to read music. Oh, it's so great. You feel so much smarter. Yeah. <laughs> sure the, the thing about it is, is, is so it it's simple, but it's it's a language not everybody speaks. Even though it, it's simple, you just you have to be in the right like receptivity. Yeah. You know, you can, right. if you're not interested, just like anything, and you don't have any immediate application for it, just like any yeah. other language you're learning, yeah. there's no, that you don't retain. Yeah. And it's like, oh, and it remains forever confusing. Yeah. But once you immerse and you start doing stuff with immediate application and you're, mm -hmm. you wanted to be there in the first place, 
Mm -hmm. it's like you're like, whoa, why did I never do this 20 years ago? It's because you weren't interested enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, today's the first day of the rest of your life. <laughs> That's right. So wait, are, the one, two, three, four, five, six. are there a total of 11 notes then? Is that right or no? Uh, 11 semitones. Yeah. Okay. And then you, you can do sharps and minors and all that off of each of those. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's a whole, that's getting ahead of yourself, but yes. I know. I know. Mm -hmm. All uh, right. I am. I highly recommend melted candy bar with pecans. I love it. It's delicious. Okay. <laughs> um, so Saturday morning, 8.30, see where you get. Okay. Bring, bring any questions that you've got. Yeah. I'll send you the Zelle. Um, I'll send you the link for this registering your account with Music Teacher's Helper. Okay. I think it, it might come from info at a higher note com. It might come from Music, music Teacher's Helper. I can't remember. But you'll, okay. see, you'll see both of those together. Okay. And, um, and we'll get going. Okay. Yay! Thank you. All right. Bye, friend. Bye-bye. Good night. Sleep well. Good night. You too. Mm -hmm.